Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today, we'll be talking about a very important uh, issue. As we all know that Pakistan very successfully conducted this very important extraordinary moot of the OIC uh, that was held in Islamabad over the weekend. And interestingly, a lot of countries in fact pledged and supported the idea and they said they'll be working very closely with Pakistan and Afghanistan in order to make sure that the current prevailing crisis should be taken care of. Whether you talk about the uh, issue of food security or you talk about the issue of capacity building or you talk about the issue of humanitarian crisis or you talk about the women rights or perhaps you talk about the uh, financial crunch. Now that is something very important. As we all know there are sanctions on the Taliban regime and uh, the flow of money is not possible unless until certain sanctions are lifted or certain countries really support them in cash and kind. Now the United States role and responsibilities towards Afghanistan. 20 years ago when Afghanistan was invaded, we all know what happened after that during the next two decades. And now the situation is that after spending $2.2 trillion in the Afghan area, the Americans in fact handed over the Taliban regime to the Taliban regime after spending 20 years and interestingly killing hundreds and thousands of innocent people as well. Now, whenever I read about the demands, perhaps the most important ones are about the women rights, about the women education and the women employment. But I hope and I do believe that they do understand that they can only do that if those people are alive. More than 60 to 65 percent of the population is at a verge of starvation. Acute shortage of clean drinking water. There is an acute shortage of fuel, acute shortage of food. And on top of that, uh, there isn't any liquidity available for the Afghan government or the interim setup, let me put it this way, in order to even give these salaries of the people who are working. So absolute chaos, whether you talk about the health facilities or you talk about the other social sectors such as education uh, and so and so forth. Now, important factor now is that the Americans, they have uh, been a part of this very important moot and they have realized about the urgent need of help. Now, before I introduce you to our panelists, our production team has prepared uh, a report. Let's watch that first. Pakistan's stance and voice regarding taking care of the war-torn Afghan citizens, which are left behind by the United States in the agony of the humanitarian crisis, has successfully reached to the world states and organizations. Pakistan's abiding commitment towards the deprived citizens of Afghanistan took 70 delegations from the Organization of Islamic Cooperation Member States, non-members and regional and international organization members under one umbrella in the Saudi chaired 17th extraordinary session of the world's second largest body, OIC, on 19th December 2021. In this session, all the members agreed on the establishment of the Humanitarian Trust Fund and Food Security Program as well as appointing body's Assistant Secretary-General for Humanitarian Affairs, Ambassador Tariq Ali Bakhid, a special envoy for the OIC, Secretary-General for Afghanistan. Moreover, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Foreign Ministers called for unfreezing of Afghanistan's financial resources by United States for preventing collapse of economic system and revival of the economic activity. This effort was appreciated and welcomed by the United States Special Representative for Afghanistan, Thomas West. Earlier, on 20 December 2021, a group of 46 mostly Democratic lawmakers wrote a letter to United States President Joe Biden pressing him to urgently take steps to help avert a looming humanitarian disaster in Afghanistan. Though, the White House responded later that their hands are tied regarding frozen funds. Moreover, on 28 December 2021, a senior U.S. official, while giving a background briefing to journalists, claimed that the United States has worked quietly to address the liquidity crunch being faced by the Afghan economy as it transferred 200 million U.S. dollars through the United Nations and the private banks. Now to talk about it, let me quickly introduce you to our panelists. We have with us in our studio on my right is uh, Shaquille Ramesab, who is a senior analyst, senior economist. Thank you so much, Ramesab, for your time. And we have with us uh, uh, Dr. Jamil Khan Saab on uh, Skype, former ambassador, senior diplomat. Jamil Saab, pleasure to have you in the show, sir. Thank you so much uh, for your time. And uh, on phone, we'll be talking to 
uh, senior journalist Anwar Iqbal Saab, uh, who will be joining us from the United States of America, Washington, D.C. Uh, but currently, uh, since <coughs> Ramesh Saab, you just uh, uh, recently witnessed that Pakistan held a very, very uh, successful moot. This particular, I think, get-together of the OIC was really important and much needed. Perhaps a lot of countries, they have pledged. Countries like Saudi Arabia, they have also said that they will assist financially and otherwise also. 20 foreign ministers and 10 deputy foreign ministers were present. I think that really tells you the story about the success of this particular moot. Now, sir, the real issue is about the role of the United States of America. And as the situation is getting worse in Afghanistan, winter is getting really severe. The food security issue has become the real challenge. Clean drinking water, medical facility, forget about the education, that would come later. But sir, when I listen that uh, the Americans in particular are only concerned about three, four mega issues. And the top three, one is about the women rights, women education and women employment. Sir, that is only possible when things are normal. Currently, uh, it's a very, very tough situation out there for the children, for the elderly, for the women, and even for each and every single Afghan living there, sir. 60 to 65% of the population is, it is at its verge of starvation. Now, Ramesh Saab, health or education facility should be first provided, or the, I would say this is the rescue operation, I would say, or this rescue is more important. Thank you, Faisal. I think uh, first we must congratulate uh, uh, Pakistan for um, bringing together so many foreign ministers and the delegates from across the world, and especially in the context of the Pakistan where the people always put the security issue. But this uh, also shows the world that we have the capability to organize and provide the security to such a huge mood. And it is not about this to organize. If you look around there, the Islamabad was open, we were moving freely. There was not like the things like that, everything is closed down. So that is a successful event. Now coming to the issue of Afghanistan. Faisal, I can't understand for whom you are talking about. When you talk about the right, the fundamental right is to live. If you are ignoring the fundamental right, then the whole story seems like the baseless, as you say, you say like that, it has no value. First, you have to provide them sufficient food and the shelter where they can feel safe and they can survive. Then you can talk about when the economy is on the roll, then you can talk about how to create the jobs for the women. And one thing and second thing, every society, they have the right to decide for themselves what they want. That is a fundamental, you can say the issue uh, fundamentally, it is the principle of the democracy. Where you say, so every individual have the right to decide. So same, in the same terminology, so every country have the right to decide what they want and how they want to move. One thing and second thing, Faisal, uh, I think the USA and the world should not commit the mistakes of the past. What they did in the past, for example, I was just listening to a speech by Charlie Wilson, he said it was a glorious day we won the war. But at the end, I cannot use the word which he used, so we lost. Because he was advocating to invest $500 million on the education, and nobody listened to him. Mm -hmm. And later on, so the same country, they put a trillion of dollars to fight, of, uh, you can say, the war, where the hundred, uh, the hundred and thousand of people lost their lives. And apart from the loss of the uh, Afghan people, you can also look what happened to the economics, uh, economic power of the USA and the Western country. Correct. So, right now they are again making, uh, what mistakes they made at that time? Number one, the countries which helped the USA and other countries, they did not, uh, you can say, support them. For example, Pakistan, they sanctions the Pakistan. Right now they are again making the mistakes. For example, when the USA came to uh, Afghanistan, which countries assist Afghan, uh, uh, USA? Iran was the first country to provide the intelligence and he, the, he was, uh, Iran was rewarded with, uh, by the inclusion in the um, access of evil. Russia was there to assist the uh, USA and NATO to fight against the terrorism. What they did? They put every effort to exclude the Russia from contributing in Afghanistan. For example, they wanted to train a few people for the anti-narcotics. USA did not allow the Afghan officials to go there. Then third, Pakistan provided every facility. Pakistan lost so many precious lives. But what they did? They, did, they included, the, they, bring, uh, they brought India to the Afghanistan. 
simultaneously these things happen. Then the again the war the, uh, you can say you can look at it and you can analyze yourself. Mm -hmm. The first two three years USA and NATO were very successful, but when they started to these things, they were, their success started to diminish. So they should avoid these mistakes. Because like sir, if you remember, uh, you know even in those days when they started up building these huge complexes in Afghanistan. A lot of people even then, I'm talking about 2003-04, this was the time of uh, General Musharraf and they used to say that they are here to stay, they are not here to eliminate Al-Qaeda because the kind of bunkers they are making, the kind of setups they are creating and they are like for another 200 years or something. Yeah, that, that's, uh, you are right. Remember? And look, again, when I say giving the example, again no. Pakistan supported USA and provided, uh, facilitated in every way for the other peaceful withdrawal from uh, Afghanistan. Correct. They made the commitments with the Taliban. But right after the withdrawal, what they are doing? They are sanctioning Taliban. They are not listening to Pakistan. They are putting their own, uh, you can say, the conditionalities and everything. Their own agenda once so again. So that means mm. you are trying to create a managed chaos. But remember, Faisal, once when there is a price, uh, there is that some nation is paying the price in the form of the human lives, that chaos will never be manageable. It, it will expand. It will, um, you can say, go everywhere. So they need to avoid these mistakes and let the pay of common citizen to survive. Even during the, you can say, war on the terror, the common people were not been given a, a chance uh, to have their say. For example, you are talking about the water. You know, water in Afghanistan, per capita availability of water is more than 3,000 cubic meter. In Pakistan, it is 1,000. But they did not build the infrastructure because the water is scattered in different parts. Some parts, they have the abundant water. Other then parts they don't have. Part, there is they needed yeah. to build the infrastructure. It was also required for the agriculture. Mm. So where is that infrastructure if they were saying, so we were developing the Afghanistan. Fundamental thing was to develop the infrastructure Sir, for water. if they water. would have, forget about 2.2 trillion, if they would have actually invested 20 billion over the 20 years in the infrastructure development, Afghanistan would have been a different they country altogether. They created together. war economy. Yes. That war economy, from where and the a lot of Afghan dependence on the not Afghanistan of dollars leave from United States. Of one minute, leave Afghanistan people aside. How many consultants were hired? How many billions of dollars have been given to them to create, the, to, the US. to create the reports? Hmm. And how many contractors were hired to provide the different facilities for the billions of dollars? It is one, it was not the war economy for the Afghan people, but it was also war economy for independent you can have business community consultants and think tanks and a media and everybody at the end of the day if you go through that report uh, rami sab that very clearly indicates and tells us that uh, only certain people certain families certain generals certain bureaucrats uh, were billions taken care of, of in that regard billions and billions and billions in fact went into their accounts and who eventually uh, and for all were successful and for the all the industrial complex and for all their mistakes no they are suffocating the people uh, they are they're suffocating the people of Afghanistan and they are trying to make them pay the price. All right. Now, let me also engage um, uh, Dr. Jamil Saab. Jamil Saab, I am sure you must have, uh, you know, uh, been following all uh, over the last week regarding this very important moot and the summit that was held over the weekend in Islamabad. I have been watching your television shows at various uh, uh, channels. Now, Dr. Jamil, overall, when you look at the conditionalities, uh, in fact, put by the United States of America in order to make sure that to some extent they'll be able to release a certain amount, perhaps 200 million, and then one of their uh, very senior delegates and uh, <coughs> uh, the envoy for the Afghanistan was also in Pakistan with the chief of army staff. Do you think, sir, the issue has been sorted out? Money is going to be back? Uh, in Afghanistan, I'm not talking about the 9.5 billion US dollars that are stuck, which is uh, the asset of the Afghan uh, Central Bank. But perhaps something needs to be issued on ASAP basis. So people's sufferings and their miseries should be taken care of. Jamil Saab. Oh, that's right. That, 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 that's where the human, human right... Um, uh, the conventions all over, you know, there are about 70 human rights conventions. Most of these conventions, they demonstrate and they suggest uh, to, to save the human beings from the human miseries of the tribe, what you witness in Afghanistan. 
So uh, if they're not doing it, particularly United States and its allies, uh, that, that, that would mean that they are not really following those conventions of which they are themselves secretary, where they, uh, they, uh, where they are not supposed to um, let the situation slide to the stage where, where the human miseries uh, reach to a level of the catastrophe. And if this catastrophe goes on, then it's not really going to restrict to Afghanistan only. A, that it's against the human rights values, and it's starting from UN Charter, starting from the United Nations um, the Universal Declare Declaration, and there are dozens and dozens of the uh, of uh, uh, the uh, conventions uh, of which even U.S. is signatory. So, uh, besides that, uh, if they don't really take care of uh, the, if the sanctions which they have imposed and the promises which they made in writing uh, in the shape of the with Alpha, signed on the 9th of last year. So, in that case, in the first uh, part of the and first paragraph of the is the U.S. court reviewing sanctions and those of and institutions to transfer to transfer their headquarters to Afghanistan. And therefore, what bank sector, Mr. David, has Uh, Jamil sir, we'll just get back to you. I think there's some technical problem with your audio. Uh, once it's fixed, I'll just get back to you on that. Coming back to you, Ramesh sir. Now, uh, another very important aspect, sir. Uh, the U.S. invoice says that uh, there is no magic button, you know, that we have to unfreeze the Afghan money. But there has to be a certain policy. If there was a magic button to freeze it, why not to have a similar magic button to unfreeze it? Number one. Secondly, sir, uh, they also say, uh, and they believe uh, very, very strongly that there are certain areas where uh, the Afghan uh, regime needs to really show a lot of improvement or betterment or mm. perhaps uh, some sort of, you know, an image should be there that uh, uh, they are doing what they were supposed to do or what they were told to do. Now, so looking at this current crisis, obviously, when we talk about a certain amount of money uh, that's there with the U.S. or with certain other European countries, I mean, don't you think that this is like um, an absolute, uh, you know, absolute power, I, I would say, of the United States of America, though we, we, we believe that it's a multipolar world or it's, it's no more a unipolar world, but it seems it is still the unipolar world where all these shots are being called by the Americans. Otherwise, we wouldn't see, let's minus America and there is the whole world. You know, the there, are, there, there, are, there are more continents there. Mm -hmm. But uh, when it comes to the decision-making process, I think the most important voice is of the U.S. I think, uh, Vassal, the most important element is that most of the money was given by U.S. and their allies. So it rests with them. So the definitely when they provided the money, so if you look at um, the GDP contribution and the GDP composition of Afghanistan, so major chunk, almost, uh, I think, the, Overwhelmingly, the major chunk was coming from the U.S. and the NATO and their allies and the European countries. So they have, uh, automatically they have the power over to freeze the assets and they can uh, the, to decide over it. If that money would be under the U.N. or some in independent banks, then we can talk about they have the ultimate power to decide. But right now, uh, there is also some, some genuine concern. We, uh, I think the Taliban should also give the head to those concerns. For example, First of all, Taliban should also learn from their past. For example, they should learn that it, they cannot survive in isolation. During their first government, they tried to survive in the isolation because uh, two, three countries only recognize them, they believe they can. But the world is globalized world now, it's interconnected. So they need to come out of that, uh, that mentality if they have. So they need to develop the linkages with other countries. And the way they want, the but other you think so they have already learned that they have to show one thing. And second, if they want, the world should help them. They should also con consider the concerns of the countries. 
So definitely it is a give and take. You cannot say like that you help me on my own terms. No. You have to show some flexibility. But sir if I am thirsty and you are giving me a bar of gold, that bar of gold might be very expensive and it must have been carrying a lot of value but at that moment I need water to survive. So that's this what is I'm the saying. difference. Uh, that is what I am saying they showed commitment. For example, I can give you one more example. So they have to openly say so TTP, ETIM, so these are the terrorist outfit and they will not allow them to flourish in Afghanistan and they will try to do everything to, uh, to, uh, to terminate them. So right now they are not giving such statements. World is asking them to give the, for example, China in the term of the ETIM, they are looking towards that, how they are describing ETIM. So they should tell the Chinese, look, they are the terrorist organization, we will do everything to terminate it. And there can, other be, uh, there can be other example. So that concern. Now, now the million dollar question is perhaps that uh, do you think the Afghan uh, regime at the moment, the regime of the Taliban, can actually fight on so many fronts, whether you talk about fighting with the TTP, ETIM, not IMU, fighting, Daesh, not fighting. or ISK for that matter. Not fighting. They should clear their position to the world, what they think about these options. All right, sir. So at this point, sir, <coughs> uh, we have been joined in by Anwar Iqbal Saab from Washington, D.C. Iqbal Saab, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Sir, good to have you in the show after a long time. I hope all is good at your end. Sir, talking about this moot and talking about a very important statement issued by the U.S. envoy to Afghanistan, lately met the chief of army staff also and the foreign minister too, where he said that uh, the public has a different <coughs> point of view regarding Afghanistan. So it is a little difficult for us and we do not have any magic button to press and release the 9.5 billion dollars because obviously at the end of the day this is the money of the taxpayer of the United States of America. Now sir don't you think that narrative has been built against the Taliban regime over a period of time and especially in the current uh, uh, year I would say and uh, if that is the case sir then uh, if the American people are not ready to help them I mean why are they talking about uh, putting so much pressure on the Taliban regime regarding the women rights the rights to work, their rights to um, education, their rights to so many other uh, facilities for that matter. Your take, sir. So there are two things. One is a government policy. And the U.S. Go government has been involved in Afghanistan since 1979, first during the war against the Soviets, then after 9-11, and it has been more than 40 years. Uh, so obviously, they have a policy in Afghanistan, they have interests in Afghanistan, they have invested money in Afghanistan, and they would like to protect their interests. Then there is the American public. I remember even during the war, when the war was at peak, there was this woman whose son was killed in Afghanistan, and she once collected thousands of women outside the White House, and she, she had just one simple question. She asked each woman whose uh, son has, or daughter has been killed in Afghanistan. There were like several dozen of them. They were brought on the mic and asked if they could pronounce the word Afghanistan. And none of them could. And then she would ask wherever she would go, why has my son died for a country whose name I cannot even pronounce? So yes, when a U.S. official say that the American public has lost interest in Afghanistan, of course they have. They think that the Americans have stayed much too long there, that they should have pulled their troops earlier, and they don't really want to have anything to do with Afghanistan. But the American government does. The American government has interest. The American government, that's why you see all these demand, demands from the Taliban. That's why you see what other demands. Demands are basically aimed at protecting the setup that the United States created in Kabul. The demands aim at creating a middle class in Afghanistan that idealizes Western democracy because, you know, that's what the United States wants to promote in other countries. So that's who sees who's use interest. We all know international relations are not about principles. International relations are always about interest between two nations and how to coincide those interests. So, so yes, uh, uh, it will be difficult to persuade Congress because Congress is uh, about to go for midterm elections. And so it will be difficult to persuade Congress to give more money to uh, for Afghanistan and to release the, money, the, the Afghan assets. Uh, 
but the administration will do its best and and this this thing will this thing like this competition between public opinion and your your official us interest will continue now another very important area sir and that is about uh, the current crisis and the current issues and the problems that the afghan uh, people are going through sir the winter the severe winter let me put it this way is there shortage of medical facilities as i earlier mentioned there are no more ngos operating there uh, there is a lot of uh, uncertainty there is uh, a lot of other issues that are prevailing or will prevail in the future if the same uh, you know uh, continues uh, which we we are witnessing at the moment now anwar saab do you believe that uh, deep down uh, in the hearts of the americans do they still believe that uh, the afghan invasion was a mistake i'm talking about the general public because obviously pentagon thinks differently white house thinks differently their military has a different approach they have their own narratives perhaps 90% of the people do not understand what the us is up to they are only shown through the fox television and similar other outlets that uh, you know that they need to know that is it your take on that point sir well um, our ordinary americans are not interested in afghanistan they were never interested in afghanistan they did not necessarily see the us invasion as a mistake because they believed that the united states should have done something after 911 but if you talk to ordinary americans they would say whether they are republicans or democrats they would say one thing i mean like if you go to a pub if you go to a pool pool club if you go to a restaurant if you go to a shopping mall Uh, ask come I and have done that for but in general we call walk, walk stops to get here go and ask people and they would say no uh, I, i don't know i don't care that is attitude of course they're not interested in afghanistan but uh, they they think that that the masses was correct in invading afghanistan but they should have pulled their troops out and as, as soon as they could uh, but uh, your second question about uh, uh, human humanitarian issues <clears throat> food shortage suffering of the afghan people on these issues americans uh, pay a lot of attention to what the ngos what human rights groups what what the united nations and the other agencies say and i think us media the us media is reflecting this very well you do not see much report on afghanistan or on taliban or the political situation in afghanistan in europe but you do see it, every day there there are stories about the humanitarian humanitarian crisis in afghanistan and they want to help out the afghan people all right thank you so much um, uh, anwar saab uh, for your comments now coming back to yeah. you jamil saab i hope uh, you can hear me clearly this time uh, yeah. now very important issue that has been made sir american people versus the american uh, government uh, i still remember mr joe biden who used to you know look like the champion of human rights and democracy all over the globe and especially when it comes to the actual human rights issue the man made human rights issue or the man made humanitarian crisis in afghanistan so this man is silent and why is he hasn't he served as the vice not. president for almost 8 years and he do understand exactly what is going on in afghanistan but when he has been made the decision maker this man seems to be you know pretty quiet right why while he is in a driving seat as a president of united states he um, he is under a lot of uh, other pressures now one of the pressures uh, which he is facing these days in the united states is the kind of abrupt withdrawal and yesterday i was with one of the united states um, ambassador in one of the television program and he himself admitted that you know this is the worst defeat which uh, us could have ever witnessed in uh, afghanistan so that's one embarrassment and as mr anwar was saying that uh, they are just very close to their midterm um, uh, election and uh, uh, dem- democrats uh, graph all the surveys is showing that it's going down so uh, they are somehow trying to uh, demonstrate to the people they are trying to demonstrate to their own people that uh, um, uh, Tal- taliban they are being punished and not realizing that it's not taliban who are, who are being punished as imran khan has just mentioned as our foreign office has just mentioned uh, that it's the 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 afghan people it's 4 million uh, 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 40 million afghan people who are being punished on that really and as a result as a result what's going to happen this entire scenario was discussed in 
policy meeting, what we discussed, and that's one of the wonderful arrangements which our foreign office had made. So um, that was discussed that, and the implication of that is not going to restrict to Afghanistan only. And the very purpose, and even Doha agreement, what they had asked in the Doha agreement about uh, from Af uh, Afghan Taliban and what they had promised um, uh, on this document of Doha agreement was A, that Afghan Taliban was ensured that there is no terrorist organization uh, on their soil, human, human rights, women rights, children rights, education, all. But then U U.S. had also given in writing to Taliban in that document that they are going to um, initiate the review of lifting the sanction, U.S. sanction, and they are also going to lobby with the United Nations Security Council members to get that sanction lifted, 1267 and other sanctions, under which the Taliban, the Taliban government now is facing this liquidity crunch. They are facing even the NGOs and the United Nations uh, organization, they are finding it very hard to transfer their funds because the entire financial system of the entire world um, in do dollar transaction is controlled by parties. So, therefore, it's very essential, it's very empirical to, uh, to have the sanction uh, lifted, which is, which is uh, crucial for the aid giving uh, organizations. Now, yesterday, the trust fund which has been announced during the OIC uh, moot, and that trust fund to be operated by Islamic Development Bank, even that trust fund, if it is transferred, it would need that uh, financial mechanism of the United States. And unless the United States relaxes that, it will be hard for even the banks to transfer their money from outside of Afghanistan. That is a technical hitch, and it's not the first time. Uh, since 2001, this, these sanctions are there, and despite the promises which I just mentioned in the Doha, Doha agreement, it has not been done. Why it has not been done? Because the United States is still is sticking to those five points, which the United States had taken to the Security Council on the 31st of uh, August, uh, the, after taking over, after of Taliban taking over. And then that um, Security Council resolution contained five points, which we, you, you already uh, mentioned during your intro, the women's rights, the children's rights, um, and also women education, all-inclusive government, uh, the Afghan territory not to be used by the terrorist organization, and no terrorist uh, group uh, should be able to uh, have their recruitment from Afghanistan, and so on and so forth. So that has been that has been the main sticky point. The problem is, it, it's just a common sense for the entire world. And the, the, this was quite deliberated uh, the, in the OIC vote, which Pakistan organized, that if we tie up their hands, uh, Afghanistan Taliban, by not giving them any funds, their employees, including their soldiers and education uh, teachers, That's their correct. health department, their municipal the corporates, they're not getting their salary. Their institutions do not have anything to run their... To, to, so that to, means that, uh, sir, uh, Jamil, Jamil sir, what, what I've understood, you very categorically mentioned it, you, you're totally right. So this means that the United States of America really, you know, they have this in their mind and they really want uh, that the current regime of the Taliban should get down on their knees, they should accept their failure and we'll make sure that all they need should not be provided so that there is an absolute chaos and then we can, you know, again send somebody like Mr. John Kerry who can appoint XYZ for whatever post he or she wants. Don't you think this is just I like adding fuel to the fire, sir? I have written an article, it's published today in Amman News, and uh, the last paragraph of the article, and which is not only my opinion, there are other analysts also, they are mentioning that the United States, is uh, is it all done because of the reset of the United States foreign policy? Now, there is skepticism, and there are reasons to raise those skepticism. And what are those skepticism? Basically, uh, what is number one priority of the United States after the resetting of their foreign policy um, post um, uh, uh, Trump uh, regime once Obama, uh, once uh, Mr. Biden had taken over. No, that is basically containment of China. And mm. the flagship portion and the flag flagship uh, part of the whole BRI is your CPAC. And CPAC, if, uh, if, if Afghanistan is uh, uh, destabilized, 
even if controlled destabilization take place there obviously united states and other countries would not like um, the afghanistan to be completely destabilized stabilized if that happens it will become a free for all for all these terrorist groups of the world to to be operating and then then 911 type of incident can happen so the controlled destabilization would serve the purpose of the foreign policy of the united states and that means they would be able to um, bring the stumbling block um, so far as the implementation of um, the, their CPAC uh, project is concerned. So without without spending much, that's one. But in the process, they are really sacrificing so many lives, so many children, so many people um, uh, due to their hunger and due to their misery. And if Afghanistan slides and if their institutions, whatever is left, if that, those institutions further weaken up or totally crumble, then it will take years and years to really reestablish them. I have seen that with my own eyes, and I have experienced that in East Timur, once the institution had completely raised to the ground, and then once they were to be lifted and reformed, it had taken quite a bit of time. And Pakistan, Pakistan is worried, and the neighbor countries, or the neighboring countries are also worried because of these, these, these uh, uh, the, the issues. Um, the United, United, United Nations and uh, United, United States, if they do not take a preventive measures at this stage or not uh, take the corrective measures, then probably the price which is to be paid for the entire world, uh, which has been indicated during the OIC meeting and which is being indicated by so many analysts, that that would be very heavy for the entire world. And that's where the, uh, the danger is. Pakistan would, of course, be the number one victim. Even Prime Minister today, while addressing the foreign office um, uh, diplomats, has told that those uh, starting from 80, Pakistan had taken our own decision, and post to the, uh, 2001, Pakistan has been doing it all, for, um, uh, 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 which, which was not in the public interest of the Pakistan. So, Very well, uh, sir, I sir. think we are again. And as they say, uh, uh, Jamil Saab, when they say that justice delayed is justice denied, I think aid delayed no. is aid denied. CPEC, okay. at the end of the day, sir. It seems that the war or the Cold War, or I wish I could call it the hot war between the Chinese and the Americans, that is the actual bone of contention. And unfortunately, countries like Pakistan and Afghanistan are paying for it. Just in order to contain China on the Western side, sir, uh, the Americans would always like to have their presence. And what was the point being there for 20 years? And again, as I say, spending this kind of money. I mean, it's unbe just imagine if 2.2 trillion dollars are spent wisely on in all over Asia, all the poor countries, Asia would have become the number one economy for I think another 2,000 years or something. But the real area is different. The real issue is different. Whatever is brewing in the mindset of the decision makers sitting in Washington D.C. or in Pentagon, perhaps is as different than what they tell the world on media. Faisal, I think that is the most important um, question we have to look around right now. I will answer in two parts. Number one, why, uh, why China, uh, USA and other countries, they cannot contain China? And second, so what was the strength of USA by working on that they became the empire of the world? Number one, look, China, if you look at the China, if they want to launch the war, Cold War against China, they will not be successful this time as they were successful against USSR. The reason, China believes in the global system and they are deeply integrated in global system. If you look at that, so they are the biggest trader of the world. Correct. So that means that the strength of the USA when they were in the power, so they were acting as a pull factor for imports. They were importing from all over the world. No, China has established Shanghai Import Expo. That is a unique. You find the export expos, but you never find the import expo. Hmm. China That's is exactly trying. <laughs> so China is doing these things. Number two, China has created its own global system, Belt and Road Initiative. Mo one foot, 142 countries and other organizations, they have signed the agreement with China. So that means China has parallelly created also their own global system. If you look at the financial system, they have Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank. That is a parallel to the World Bank because the focus is development of these things. Then through the BRICS, they are bringing parallel to the IMF. 
And if you look at Brazil, this, Russia, mm -hmm. uh, you have India, China, and you have South America, and then you and have Mint. And if you look the security side, so China now have ultra hypersonic system. This way, missiles. Sir, a lot of people believe that the Chinese have actually overpassed the Americans. Lot of uh, in, in, in this uh, 5G and 6G technology. Not only the Americans, but also USA, the AI, AI in Russia, artificial intelligence. Russia, they also have passed that. So, so China, China is much ahead than other part, and China is deeply integrated in the system. So, other countries have the interest with China. Not only that, China have interest with the countries. The other countries, and no China is a, a encouraging imports. One thing and second thing. If you have uh, read this uh, statement by the President Xi Jinping few days back, he categorically said, China will exhaust all the resources to engage the world talent. Why no information technology? And to engage the world title? Talent. Talent, okay. To young professionals. Mm -hmm. the word, look at the word. China will exhaust all the resources to attract the youth and young professionally across the world and provide them. So the instead of uh, looking towards the West, people will start coming into China. And this is what is happening, by the way. Ra Have that you is seen a, so many that's foreigners why, in China? Yeah. That's why I believe, uh, just making it a uh, brief, mm -hmm. that's why they cannot contain China. Second, wh what was the strength of US? The strength of US was its a cooperation. When they extended cooperation of the World War II, so they became the global power. That's correct. When they started to retreat from their co cooperation, they started to lose. They started getting into self-isolation after 9-11. And that's why that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. They started to isolate. No, they are losing the power. If Mr. Trump want to be, uh, make America great again, he has to learn that. If Biden want to build back better, he has to learn that. So it is wise to work on your strength. And China is also doing these things. He is building cooperation. He is opening up. As the President Xi Jinping said, so we are going for the comprehensive opening of our economy, of our trade, and everything. They are bringing the people. They are opening the avenues. They are extending cooperation. So that's why China is becoming the global power. US is leaving. It's the strength of the, co the, strength of the cooperation. And they are losing the power. All right. Two All right. things and third thing, lastly. Mm -hmm. Pakistan and China should also work with Afghanistan. They should not wait for the U.S. and the Western allies. Because when they, are, uh, they have their own design to suffocate the Afghan people, the chaos, if there is a chaos in, this, uh, in Afghanistan, so every country will be impacted, especially Pakistan and China. Why? Because if you look at their very two very important mm -hmm. corridors of Belt and Road initiatives, they are in the neighborhood of uh, Afghanistan. On one side, China have the China Central Asia and West Asia corridor, and on the other hand, they have the China Pakistan economic Sir, corridor. at the end of the day, we all on need the third dimension and stable Afghanistan. On third side, they have the billions of dollar investment in Iran. Four hundred billion they plan to do. In the so next this whole years. scenario suggests that China should come forward all and right. help the people. All right, Ramesh Sab, since I was just told that uh, we are totally out of time, but I would like to say thank you so much uh, for your presence, and Jamil Sab. Always great to have you on the show, sir. And we learned so much from you. Thank you so much for your participation as well. And I would like to thank Anwar Iqbal Saab that he also joined us from uh, Washington, D.C. And that's all we have uh, for this up. I'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow at 8.05 p.m. Till then, you take good care. Khuda Hafiz.